land in Cuba is owned by foreign American, co American companies. I'm going to give it back to the ordinary people. And at that, the Americans began to say, well, that seems like a bit of a communist thing to do. And so the companies who were losing money began to put pressure on the government. The government began to suspect Castro of being a communist. And this was all taking place um, in, the, in the presidency of Eisenhower. That's the guy who came directly before Kennedy as president. And President Eisenhower approved a, pa a plan for training 1,400 Cuban exiles. These were 1,400 people who left Cuba when Castro came into power. 1,400 of these guys were trained by the CIA, CIA in Guatemala. Uh, and they were trained and they were supposed to go in and invade Cuba and take it back. Now, uh, Kennedy comes into power in the middle of this plan. And he misreads a memo, he misreads some information from Eisenhower, and he thinks that Eisenhower has given permission for the invasion to go ahead. He didn't pay attention to the detail. Eisenhower basically said, yeah, let the training go ahead. Train these guys, but Eisenhower did not say let them invade. Now, Kennedy's got this problem. He's got 1,400 trained guerrilla commandos in Guatemala, who, if they get particularly annoyed, could take Guatemala over, Guatemala over could cause all sorts of problems for Kennedy. His military advisors come to him and say, listen, let these guys invade. Let them invade Cuba. We know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go onto this beach, which became known as the Bay of Pigs. Don't worry, it'll be fine. We'll give them plenty of air support. And, and let them invade. And look, if, if it doesn't work out, they can escape into the mountains and sort of act like sort of guerrilla campaigners out there. They can act like terrorists out there. They can undermine... They can undermine Cuba, uh, Castro. What nobody bothered to do was to look at the maps and realise there was no way to the mountains from the beach. What they also refused to admit was that the Castro government was incredibly popular in Cuba. What they also neglected to look at was the size and the training of the Cuban army, which was starting to get support from, from Russia. And so what happened was, in the Bay of Pigs invasion, 1,400 men went onto the beach and were slaughtered, captured, paraded. Kennedy immediately went on the TV the next day and apologised for his role in it. But at the end of the day, Kennedy made one huge mistake in that invasion. He listened to his advisors, and then at the very last moment he changed his mind and chickened out. He listened to his advisors and let the invasion go ahead. When the invasion started to falter, his military advisors came to him and said, listen, listen, we have to send in air support, we have to send in American troops to help these guys out. Kennedy wouldn't do that. He didn't want all-out war with Cuba. He didn't know how Russia would react. And so he chickened out. He wouldn't go the whole course. Now, what Kennedy tried to do I mean, he went on TV the next day and said, oh yes, I accept it was my responsibility, I accept it was my fault. And then his press men ran out and told the newspapers, yes, but it was really President Eisenhower's idea. It wasn't Eisenhower's idea. Eisenhower and Kennedy had a meeting afterwards and, and Eisenhower went through Kennedy uh, and tore shreds off him. Eisenhower had been the, in charge of the Allied forces in World War II. He was a man who understood war. And he said to Kennedy, listen, when you go to war, you go to war 100%. You're either in or you're out. And what you did was just show weakness to the Russians. You made it look to the Russians as if Americans will check on out when the going gets tough. This was something you either did or you didn't do. You don't do it by half measures. And that was your crucial mistake in the Bay of Pigs. Once you sent those troops in, once those troops started to fail, you had to be prepared to send in the American army to back them up. So your problem was, you didn't stay the course. You tried to do it by halves. When it comes to war, either you do it or you don't. Kennedy from the Bay of Pigs invasion, even though it was a disaster, takes away two things. First of all, check the details for yourself. Don't just listen to your advisors. His advisors came to him and told him the Bay of Pigs would be easy. Those 1,400 men would walk over and stroll through Cuba and, and topple Castro. And 
Cuba would be pro-American again and, and everything would be wonderful. And Kennedy just listened to them. He, he didn't check the details. He didn't ask any questions. He didn't say, you know, how can you be sure? So the first thing that Kennedy learned was, check the details for yourself. Be critical. When you're in leadership, criticize everything. Check everyone's argument. Make sure that people are talking sense. Don't just listen to your advisors. The second thing he learned, when you go to war, you're either all in or you don't go in at all. When it comes to war, you either commit everything or you commit nothing. That will become extraordinarily important in Kennedy's foreign policy in terms of his career. He was told about Laos, which is a country near Vietnam. Um, Laos nearly became America's first Vietnam War. Laos was, was turning communist. There was a danger it could turn communist. His generals told him, go in. We can go in and we can win. Kennedy asked one of the generals, how do you know we can win? And he says, well, if you let me lose nuclear weapons, I absolutely guarantee victory. And at that, Kennedy thought, no, we're not going to war. We're not going to war in a country. When he looked at the maps and when he asked details, American soldiers would be fighting in jungles, far from home in territory they weren't used to and terrain they weren't used to. And he decided, no, we're not going to go to war in Laos. He decided to bluff instead. He made it look to the Russians as if he was getting ready to go to war, but he had no intention of going to war. And then eventually the Russians would back down. They would allow a neutral government in Laos. They didn't allow it to go communist. Because Kennedy learned that you can bluff. He learned to bluff, but he had also learned if you go to war, you go all in. And he wasn't ready to do that in Laos. Well, then we come to Kennedy's second cr big crisis his first crisis is cuba his second crisis is berlin berlin remember is in east germany and it's surrounded by communist east german territory but the problem with berlin and this was faced by walter ubricht who was the 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 uh the leader of the communist leader of of east germany is that every month thousands of east germans were going into east berlin crossing over into West Berlin and then jumping on a train getting into West Germany. He was losing too many people every month, his best workers, his best minds to West Germany. And the East German economy couldn't cope. East Germany was on the point of collapse. And Ulbricht came to Khrushchev, who was the president of Russia, the chairman, and said, Mr. Chairman, you have got to get this to stop. A meeting was arranged between Kennedy and Khrushchev in Vienna. And at that meeting, Khrushchev had sensed weakness in Kennedy. He had sensed this man back down at the Bay of Pigs. And he decided that he was going to do something about Berlin. He wanted Berlin to be completely and totally in the hands of East Germany. He, he told Kennedy, Berlin, West Berlin is like a, like a bone in my throat. I, I, I want it out. It's choking me. I want it stopped. He said that basically he was going to sign a treaty with East Germany that would allow East Germans to kick the West Germans or out of West Berlin. So, in other words, West Berlin would become part of East Germany. There would just be the city of Berlin. And he, would, he was ready to go to war for that. And in that meeting in Vienna, he bullied and he shouted and he ranted and he raved at Kennedy. Kennedy said afterwards he treated me like a little boy. But Kennedy had learnt about bluffing. Kennedy had also learnt to stir his critics in the eye. And so what he said to Khrushchev, after sizing Khrushchev up, he reckoned Khrushchev was a bully. But he also knew that Khrushchev wasn't insane. He knew that Khrushchev did not want a nuclear war. And Khrushchev said, listen, I'm ready to go to war for East Berlin. I'm ready to go to war over West Berlin. Kennedy said then, Mr. Chairman, there will be war. It's going to be a long, cold winter. And he was warning Khrushchev. There's, there's a line in the sand here. You can bully, you can bluff, you can bluster, you can shout, you can rant, you can rave. But you and I both know something. I've got more nuclear missiles than you. And no matter what you do, Mr. Chairman, no matter what you say, Khrushchev, we both know if it comes to war, I'm going to win and you're going to lose. And Kennedy was right. At that stage, America had many more nuclear weapons than Russia did. 
He certainly had many more nuclear weapons that could actually strike Russia. Russia had plenty of nukes that they could drop on Europe, but very, very few that could hit the American homeland. Kennedy did not want a nuclear war himself. He was absolutely convinced that it should not happen. He said afterwards, all wars start from stupidity. He wasn't ready for this sort of war with Russia. He didn't want a nuclear war. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, he would say that nuclear war, if it happened, would be the ultimate sign of failure. But at the end of the day, he says, oh, he was ready to draw a line in the sand. No, West Berlin is not going to go. That's my line in the sand. You're not going to step over that. You're not going to go there. And I'm ready to go to war. He went back to America and he went on TV and he said, I'm going to ask Congress for more taxes. I'm going to raise the size of the army. Um, I'm going to get ready to take Khrushchev on. And the American Congress gave that to him. He also got his defense secretary to make speeches boasting about America's nuclear strength. And that left Khrushchev back in Moscow realizing that Kennedy wasn't going to be bullied. He wasn't going to be pushed around. He realized he couldn't go to war. Ulbricht came to Khrushchev with an idea. And he said, listen, Kennedy has said that he will go to war for West Berlin. But Kennedy didn't tell us what we could do in East Berlin. Kennedy has never said to us, listen, I'll go to war to protect the people of East Berlin. He said, I'll protect West Berlin. So Ulbricht says, we'll build a wall. We'll build a wall down the middle of, of Berlin that separates East Berlin from West Berlin. And that'll stop the, the, the East Germans going into West Germany. That will stop them escaping into West Berlin, getting into West Germany. That'll stop this the bleed that will stop all my best minds going into the West German economy. The wall went up, the pictures went around the world, and the East German troops were, were actually shooting East Germans trying to get into East Germans trying to get into West Berlin. Kennedy did nothing. He made sure the newspapers and the news film reels had pictures of him out sailing while this was going on. He was signaling to Russia, I'm not going to go to war over this. My line in the sand was West Berlin. You weren't going to touch West Berlin. But I'll accept you building the wall. And so that was an incredible success for Kennedy. He, he realized how far you can push. He realized that if you push too far over the wall, you're going to end up going all in. You're going to end up with a nuclear war. He knew that he couldn't let Khrushchev push him around. And so he did incredibly well there over in the first Berlin crisis. Khrushchev was humiliated though and, and that sets up the Cuban Missile Crisis to some extent. Um, Khrushchev sent Russian tanks into East Berlin. He allowed the Russian tanks to train their, their weapons on American tanks. Uh, it created a very tense situation in Berlin. And the other thing that Khrushchev did is he set up a deal with Castro. Because he realized that America had a huge advantage in nuclear weapons. And he had to do something about that advantage. He had to take that away. Now his missiles couldn't get all the way from Russia to America. But Cuba was right on the American doorstep. If he could get some short range missiles into Cuba, 